Hello there, everybody. It is Duck Designs, and today I'm going to be taking a look at one of my recent courses I just finished up called The Canyon Club. Uh, this course right here, uh, I came into here with an idea for this course. I wanted two things. I wanted the most bunkers I could fit on a golf course, and I wanted this course to be extremely difficult. I wanted the best players in the game to have a challenge to shoot under par out here. Uh, one of the uh, things about this course is the uh, how to join the club, per se, is uh, you have to shoot under par from the back tees to pin location one on high wind or higher. Uh, that is how you officially become part of the Canyon Club. Uh, I, despite playing this course 20 plus times through play testing, still have yet to shoot under par just from the back tees to pin one without high wind. So anyone who actually can do that will be incredible. Uh, my best that I've gotten on high wind was one over. Uh, this course is just hard, man. You... You have the first six holes that you can realistically get under par, and then past that, the whole rest of the course is hell on earth. Uh, so I'm just going to go by real quick uh, each hole and kind of talk about them. Uh, I'm going to start off with the clubhouse area. Uh, this is my first time actually doing a custom clubhouse, and I really like the way it came out. I got a little cart barn down here, got a little uh, covered driving range out here. Got some nice little seating. I like this little putting green that I was able to put in up here. Really nice, simple parking lot. Nothing super special. Uh, got a little like halfway house area to start at, stop after 9 on our way to 10 right here. Uh, overall, not, not a lot of decoration around the clubhouse. It's just when you do these custom clubhouses, they stand out a lot more. Uh, got a very simple chipping and putting area. I actually really like this one, how tucked it is up against the rocks and everything. Uh... And got our main driving range out here. Uh, our driving range over here that with the covered shelter is just hitting golf balls into water. So you're kind of just throwing away money. But it is a nice golf course. So we're going to assume they have the money. All right, coming down to hole number one. Uh, one of the little things I added on this course I saw some from somebody else's course is these little uh, number signs uh, dictating the hole number. Very cool little things. Uh so what I was doing for this course is I was making every hole as hard as I could. I was trying to make uh, tight landing areas, have bunkers everywhere, extremely penile. Like, if you missed a shot, you're messed up. Uh, so coming on to hole number one, uh, our landing area is right here over top of this bunker. Uh, even with it, if the wind's a little bit in our face, uh, for the longest drivers, you might be able to reach this if, with no wind. Uh, I really like this landing area. It almost always gives you an awkward stance hitting into your second shot, and your second shot is brutal. Uh, coming up across this lake, uh, you can make it across this little part of the canyon right here. Uh, it is very hard, but you can make it across it on your second shot and get on the green in two. Otherwise, your layup area here, as you can see, is all slanted right down into the out of bounds. So even laying up here is very difficult. You have to be very mindful of your shot and land it way back here, whereas a lot of players are going to try to get it as close to this edge as they can to get a shorter shot, which is extremely dangerous. Uh, now we're finally coming up to the greens. The greens are the, the biggest danger on this course. Uh, they're what's really meant to take the players out and uh, have people quit playing the course. Uh, I know making this course was going to be very controversial. I know a lot of people weren't even going to finish the round because of how difficult the greens are. But that is completely okay. It was not made for people who can't handle it. Uh, this was made for the best players in the game. That's exactly why I made it. Uh, this green right here is probably one of the easiest greens on the course. Not going to lie. Uh, pin 1 is actually up here. This is your tournament pin. Pin 4, hardest pins over here. Uh, my 2 pins are my right here. 2 pins are easy pins. And 3 pins are just filler pins. Uh... In terms of this green, very simple. Uh, the main thing you got to watch out for is this big drop off in the back. Uh, you got the one here, one here. I've never gone this far, but you can definitely ride off the edge of this green and have a pretty hard chip coming up that slope. Uh, coming up here to number two. Number two is uh, kind of a little testy tee shot. It realistically isn't that hard, but you don't really notice this big mound from the tee box. It's a huge mound right here, which means you either have to lay up kind of short of it and kind of roll up the mound. Or if you try to go over, you're almost guaranteed to run off into a bunker. 
uh, one of the big things I did with this course is make fairways that run off into areas. Like this fairway right here, uh, this entire front portion, uh, which you really feel like you want to put your balls up here for the best chance possible, is all running down into the water. Uh, I've actually only gotten like one shot up in this little sliver of fairway before. Uh, the only ways you can do it is either by landing it into this hill right here and have it just barely trickle over or slicing one around this corner really hard. Uh, it is very difficult. And from here, you've got about 190 into the green. This is where most your second shots are going to be hit around the 190 range. And I mean, look at this little green right here. I mean, this is just insane. Got some huge slopes on it all over the place. This is your one and four pin tucked all the way back here in this corner. Getting a shot next to this pin is almost impossible. You just have to try to lay a ball up right here in this big flat area or this big bowl right here. Uh, and then have an uphill putt chance coming in. A lot of this course is playing smart shots coming into the greens. Uh, you can't go for half the pins uh, on this course. You have to play smart shots to two strategic areas of the green just so you can get par. You can't get birdies on every hole out here. I mean, you can technically by hitting really good shots, but it's just not realistic to get birdies on every hole out here. Uh, coming on to hole number three. Hole number three is a really tricky layup hole uh, because driver will carry you down into these bunkers or even down into here. Uh, it's super hard to get driver to stay short on this little front area because it just all slopes very heavily once you get past a certain point. In terms of your layup, most people are going to be laying up to this little plateau right here. Uh, and you can't make it there in two from this plateau. But this is probably the most birdieable or second most birdieable hole on the course. Uh, your layup for your second shot will be right here, and then you'll have a three and a four putt. Uh, the problem is here is this green is extremely penile. Uh, your one pin is back here. So messing up and going into this bunker is for sure at least a par, maybe even a bogey. Same thing with going long. Going long is more penile than short because you're chipping back onto the down slope, and you're almost always going to run off the front of the green. Uh... One thing I did want to say, in terms of my bunkering, what I kind of went for is I went for clusters. Uh, I know a lot of people would say just having one single bunker would look better, but I wanted something chaotic, and as I said, I wanted a lot of bunkers on this course. And I think that did a very nice job. There are some huge, crazy, unrealistic slopes in these bunkers, and that, that's that's what I was going for. I wanted, I wanted this stuff to be kind of insane. But uh, my clusters, as you can see, this is a chunk right here, this is a chunk right here, and this is a chunk right here. You've got uh, basically a few different bunker styles. You've got this kind of scattered bunker style right here that everything just kind of, it's you can kind of see a shape, but it's not exactly clear cut. And then you've got these down here, which is kind of the more clear cut bunker shape styles. Uh, number 12 actually got a really good example of that. These ones really fit together really, really nice. And then the third bunker style, you've got really gigantic bunkers kind of scattered around the course. We'll see those as we keep going. But um, number four here, this is the first hole I built on the course. Uh, this is where I started off with this big bridge. A very simple little railroad. Uh, put the little train at the end of it. Uh, connects up to a very simple little mining town up here. Uh, custom building, custom building, and custom building. Uh, this is it where everything started. I just wanted a little old mining town and I wanted to try to build a railroad. And it took a bunch of assets. As you can see, I didn't even finish up the back, but you can't even really tell from this side. Uh, you can't even get behind it because there's OB right here anyway. And then we've got, of course, this beautiful little backdrop to the little bridge right here as well. Beautiful little area of the course. Uh, this is the only par four on the course that is possibly drivable. Under typical conditions, it's not, but if the wind is even a little bit behind you, it is reachable. Uh, this one is probably the most birdieable hole in the course. You should, even as a uh, not a super good player, you should have a pretty good chance at a birdie here as long as you're not catching one of these big slopes. There's a, there's a fairly big landing area here for hitting a 50, 60 yard chip in. Uh, number five, immediately switching it up, going to a super tiny, really technical green. Uh, this one actually is surprisingly more hittable than you would think. Uh, you could hit this green fairly easy, as long as you get a decent shot. 
and if not it's not extremely penile the front of the screen of course does have this big drop off but the whole back portion missing long isn't super bad you're just going to have a little bit of a uh, downhill chip coming back uh, come on here to number six. Uh, number six, I really like this hole too. Uh, just a beautiful view out here on this hole. Uh, I really like the way these rocks meshed with the cart path and how it cuts into the slope. Uh, this is the first hole too where you'll have to worry about trees on your uh, approach. Uh, I actually really like this hole because you can go for this little area right here, but there's a big turtle back right here, which is forcing all your balls off in all directions. So it is really risky to go right here, and you also get blocked up by the trees a little bit. Uh, in terms of getting around the trees, it's pretty much possible to get around the trees from any angle. There's a way you can work the ball around these, uh, whether that is going through, above, over, around. There's there's a plenty of ways to go around these trees to get on the green. Uh in terms of the green, a turtleback type green uh, with a little tear on the front, kind of stitched on. These pins right here, the one and four, extremely difficult little pins. Anything long is carrying you all the way down to that little fairway down there. Uh, this bunker right here in the front is also really in play with this big slope here. It carries a lot of shots into the sand. Uh, seven right here is one of our longest par fours on the course, uh, maybe even our longest. Uh, this is a beast of a hold. It is a, it is a double fairway. Uh, the fairway on the right plays kind of tight, and your landing area is about right here, and everything kicks to the left towards the water. Uh, over here, everything also kicks to the left, but it kicks to the left towards the sand. Uh, so it is a very tough little choice. Uh, right here will leave a slightly longer shot than a good shot over here. A good shot over here will leave about 180. This will leave about 190. Uh, coming at the green... Uh, in terms of playing one pin, the right fairway is better because this is your pin right here and you can land it kind of into the slope with a draw and have it kind of roll up here. Uh, very difficult shot, though. I've only been on this tier once, but you can do it. Uh, coming on here to hole number eight. Hole number eight is our big downhill par three on the course. Uh, pretty long. Green is actually fairly simple. It's probably one of our easier greens in terms of kicking balls off the green this this holds a lot of shots on the green uh but just getting onto this little strip right here without messing up and going short short is the big killer on this hole if you go short it is quite a shot to get out of that bunker that is a giant drop right there <coughs> and of course going long too there's no way you're going to get a ball to stop if you go long you have to be on this strip somewhere to be able to get a birdie uh and here we are nine nine is one of my favorite holes in the course this is a huge uphill shot uh your shots can go anywhere in this fairway all depending on your driver distance and how much uh, loft you give it uh all of this short right here and caressing this is ob making it extremely dangerous uh and the further left you are the more this hill gets cut out of your view and you can see the green opens up more as you can get it up here better. Uh, and you need to have the shortest and easiest shot you can have on this hole because this is the second hardest green on the course, I would say. Uh, I have adjusted it uh, on this right now. Uh, on the version that is posted, uh, this green has big catches right here and right here. That'll take balls all the way into this bunker on each side. And same thing with up here. This area is a little smaller and this little front area is a little smaller. Uh, I was just messing with it because I think I'm going to make a version of this course with easier greens. Uh, just so more people can play it. Because with the way the greens are right now, it is not viable for regular casual players to really play it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release a version with slightly easier greens. Something kind of similar to this. It's obviously got a little bit of work to do, but... All right, now that we've uh, wrapped up the front nine, we're coming on over here to number 10, starting off with a very simple par three next to one of our biggest rock structures on the course. Uh, this is just like a little cave that I created. Uh, this green also brings in a feature that we will start seeing a little bit more on the course with these little funnels that kind of run through the green and these extreme tiers like this. Uh, this green right here uh, has just a bunch of little bitty tiny tears that you can stick, but it's very difficult to. Uh, 
Coming on over here to number 11. This is uh, another one of the longest par fours in the course. Uh, this one's very difficult too because this is the better line at the hole, but you've got this big catch right here that takes you down almost all the way into the sand bunker. And if it doesn't, it leaves you with a side hill shot into a green that you have to hit a dead straight shot into pretty much. Uh, as you can see with these big catches right here, each one of these catches leads you off into a bunker. As you can see, there's one here, one for each bunker pretty much. Uh, extremely penile. Uh, in terms of your other layup zone from the tee, this is your other layup. It's still a driver shot, but it gives you a flatter shot coming into the green, but a little bit more of a side angle at a cost. Uh, coming on here to number 12. Uh, number 12 is the hole that I actually like the bunkering the most on. Uh, this tee shot, I think, just looks phenomenal. Uh, and our fairway is very, very difficult. You've got this huge catch right here at driver landing distance. You want to be up here at the top of this, but that means you have to play it closer to these bunkers and closer to these trees as well to try to get that perfect little shot coming up. It's it's the difference between a 220 yard with an extra 10 feet uphill from a 170, 180 shot. Uh, and this green definitely needs the easiest shots you can get. As you can see, it's extremely difficult. Uh, this front pin is the pin four, back pin is pin one. Uh, anything long is OB. All of this past this little uh, fence up here is out of bounds. Uh, coming on here to hole number 13. Uh, hole number 13 is one of our more aggressive bunkering holes out here. Uh, it is just covered in bunkers. Uh, now a lot of people may ask, why wouldn't you just always hit this top tier up here? The bottom tier just seems more dangerous inherently. Uh, the big thing is, is in terms of getting a clean second shot at the green, it is pretty hard because of the way that this fairway slopes, it'll kick most stuff over into the sand. And if you land anywhere over on this side, you could get kicked and have a shot having to come through these trees, which can be difficult, or even end up in the sand. The only way you can end up with a good shot is you have to end up right here. This is your only good area to be. And it is pretty hard to do that with how much this fairway slopes. And in terms of this area down here, it's just about as easy as hitting from up here. Uh, the green here is ridiculous. You got your four pin here and your one pin here. Uh, Maybe arguable that you could switch those. But this pin right here is a doozy, an absolute doozy. That's your tournament pin. Uh, coming on here to hole number 14, uh, a little layup sh a hole. I wanted to have a hole where I had to force someone to not hit a driver. And this is that hole. Uh, this is your little layup zone right here. That's all you've got to aim for. I've been all over the place here in all these bunkers. I've been in the water before. Uh, in terms of your coming in shot, you've got this little tree to contend with. This is only really uh, in contention if you're on the left side of the fairway over here, which does happen. Uh, and this is the hardest green on the course. There is no harder green than this. Uh, this thing is just ridiculous. It is up on top of a huge hill. And as you can see, we've got two big catch areas that feed you off the green into each of these bunkers. Uh, and this kind of goes back to the same thing as I was saying earlier. You need to play to the safe zones of the green, which there aren't many. But when you can find them, you need to play to them. This is one of them. Uh, this is a big old mound. You need to be trying to hit shots into this mound. Even if your pin's over here, just hit it into this mound. Uh, the way that this green is, there is a tiny, tiny little uh, bowl right here. Very little. So you can come off of this pretty easy and kind of come down into here. And just rest your ball down here. Uh, in terms of the bunkers on this, uh, this is kind of what I was saying. Number nine has been changed uh, for when I release easier greens. This one's going to have to be completely redone, most likely. Uh, because, I mean, these bunkers from down here are just ridiculously hard. And what will happen a lot of times is you'll hit up and it'll roll down. You'll hit up and it'll roll down. And it'll just be a back and forth like a tennis match. Uh, that's, this is one of the blow-up holes in the course, for sure. Uh, coming on here to number 15. Number 15 is, uh, kind of see some of our big bunkering out here. Uh, this is a kind of another forced layup hole. Uh, the longest three woods in the game can land right here at the crest of this hill. Uh, you've got a tiny little plateau here, but really anything past that plateau or anything coming down with any speed is going to end up in the water. And there's no way to reach this hole in two anyway, so it's really not even worth it. 
Uh, the only thing is, is this is just a really tight area. All of this is trying to land it in here. Uh, in terms of this little area, the only reason you really ever end up down here is this is actually reachable from the red tees. So red tee players will hit here and can reach the green in two. Uh, your layup from way back here will be down to here somewhere, any in this, and you'll have a fairly short shot into a decently hard two pins. This is the one and four. Pretty hard little pins on yellow slopes with a big old bunker right in front. Uh, I really do like this. This is one of our scenic scenic shots. Very beautiful area. Over here on 16, uh, I really do like the bunkering on this hole. We got a lot of bunkering up here on this right side, and I really like how this snake bunker feeds off into this little, like, kind of dribbling off bunker style. I don't really know what to call it. Kind of like, uh, I don't know what I was going to say or something. But uh, anyway, uh, this hole, I really like this one. You've got two options here. You can either hit it over to the left, which is a little riskier, or you can try to play it up onto this little plateau on the right side, which kind of contends with the trees a little bit. Uh, both areas can make it to the green fairly easy. Uh, this is, I think, our shortest par five on the course, I'm pretty sure. Uh, in terms of your shots coming into this green, extremely difficult green. Getting anything to hold the screen is almost impossible. Uh, the only way that you possibly can is getting something to land maybe right here with the, some high loft and having it kind of trickle up, maybe? I don't know, man. This is, it's a hard green. I've never stuck it before uh, for, onto, I've stuck it over here before, but I've never stuck it on the other side. It is just very, very difficult to do. Uh, but this is also where I put my little gamer ability Easter egg. Got the little two squirrels in here, got their little house. Just kind of chilling out, watching the course, watching the golf play. Nice little house. Uh, coming on here to 17. 17, I really like this hole, at least the tee shot on this hole. Uh, you've got this big uh, slope that you're hitting down into. Your drives are landing about right in here. Uh, and missing this uh, fairway is one of the most brutal misses you'll have on the course because going into these trees is arguably worse than an out of bounds penalty because sometimes you will get in these trees and you will get lost in these trees and getting your sh getting your ball out in any reasonable manner is almost impossible sometimes uh so keeping it on the straight and narrow is extremely important uh your ball almost always settles down on the fairway i've never had one at least roll off into the rough unless i've been like right on the edge already on my tee shot uh, in terms of coming into the screen, you're going to have somewhere around 170 usually coming into this one, and you will need it all, because this is, what a green right here. This is your uh, tournament pin up here on the top. This is your hardest pin down here. Uh, I mean, hell, everything out here is hard on this, on this little green. There's nothing easy about this being on a plateau. And yes, anything that does get into this funnel will roll off into the water. I tried my best to make sure of it. And now we're coming down to the picture hole. Uh, 18 down here is beautiful. Got these uh, really nice rock work up here. Uh, with all these bunkers kind of laid out for you. Uh, the big visual trick on this hole is from the tee box, you actually can't see the two deepest bunkers which sit right in front of the green. These things are absolute monsters to hit out of. Along with this green complex being the way it is, this thing is insane. Uh, your one pin is up here. On a really really hard little area and your four pin your four pin is just ridiculous i mean this is almost all yellow there's a little bit of green kind of up here but i mean man <laughs> you can't get much harder than that but uh in terms of that that is pretty much the whole course i was trying to make this video a little bit shorter my may have skipped over a few little things um uh, you guys want to give the course a try it is the canyon club uh, as i said i'll re restate the challenge uh, to become a member you must play pin one uh, back tees and high wind or very high winds uh, choice is up to you good luck and enjoy thank you guys